Hi, I'm Luke, and this is Psyched for Nature. Today we will be continuing our Vervet Crash Course with its third installment focused on communication. You'll get to hear lots of cool monkey sounds. Stick around. Again, I had helped this episode from Dr. Erica Van Duwal, director of the Inkawa Vervet Project and professor at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. Again, she'll be helping us break down some of the more complicated concepts related to communication, and she even has a cool story for us, but she'll catch up with us later on in the video. For now, let's continue with our crash course on vervets. Hey, little guy. Hey, wait. Oof. Ugh, that's one way to get your message across. Struggles for power and territory are not the only concerns for vervets. They must constantly be vigilant. Dangers come in many ways and in varied forms. But vervets have a strong group strategy for defense against predators. If you've heard anything about communication in vervets, you may have heard that they have acoustically distinct and predator-specific alarm calls that they use to alert their group members to danger. Now what's really cool about these calls is that each one elicits a different and predator-specific avoidance behavior in the monkeys who hear it. Let's go through each one in turn. If you see a terrestrial predator, like a leopard, you make this call, and whoever hears it runs up a tree and goes on high alert. If you see an aerial predator, like an eagle, you make this call, and everyone looks to the sky or runs for cover in a bush. It's important that you don't go up a tree because you could easily be snatched up like ripe fruit from the tree branches. And if a monkey spots a snake, like this extremely venomous boomslang, they make this call, and everyone goes on their hind legs and starts to scan the ground around them, and sometimes they move towards the caller. But do their calls really refer to specific predators? So for a long time, researchers really thought that um, the, those different calls for different predators are referential, so they are really for one species of predator. But lately, we realized that they seem to be a lot more flexible than this. So, for example, what is called a leopard uh, call in the vervets. Uh, you will find sometimes males doing this call in the, in the between group encounter or even in male to male fight. And so it seems yeah, that there is flexibility in these uh, in these calls and that it might reflect more the type of uh, threat. Uh, so the leopard call will be any threat coming from the ground um, and then the raptor call will be a threat coming uh, from the air um, and so when vervets are young um, juveniles will call for any large bird so uh, ibis will also um, uh, elicit a raptor uh, call but then with aging they learn what is a proper threat or not um, and if you put a drone out, uh, the vervet monkeys will also use a raptor call. So it's really any threat coming from the air uh, seems to elicit this, this response. And then you have the snake call, who seems to be more a reaction to a slow moving predator that can be both in a tree or on the ground, but it's uh, like a, a different uh, threat where you, the, the aim is to localize where, where it is and not to escape compared to the, to the two others. And I think there I have a very nice anecdote on the flexibility of these of these calls. Um, so I was in the field setting up an experiment early morning and suddenly all the monkeys went really crazy uh, with a, a leopard alarm call. And uh, I was like, oh, I should have a look in the riverbed. Maybe there is a, a nice caracal or serval walking around. Um, but I was busy setting up the experiment and, and I was hoping they will calm down so that I could uh, do my experiment. And then suddenly I see in, in the tall grass, our big dog arriving. He, so he escaped from home and found me in the field. And I was like, oh, I now I have to bring you back home instead of starting my experiment. So clearly this big dog, they classified it as a, a leopard, uh, which makes totally sense. But another day, which was really interesting, I was again in the field quite close from the house, setting up another experiment. Uh, and then the monkey gets really crazy with snake call. Um, and, uh, and I was like, okay, it was further away. I was like, okay, I carry on setting up everything. But then it became closer and closer to me. So I got really vigilant because it was very strong calls. And I was like, oh, where is the mamba or the cobra that is coming straight towards me? 
and then suddenly I see this little black tail in the tall grass. So uh, we have this uh, this little sausage dog uh, who uh, find uh, my, my track in the in the field. Um, so it really seems that vervets uh, will classify two uh, dogs as different threat depending on on how they move around. And of course, this short dog in the tall grass looked a lot more like a snake than like a ground predator. It's never fun to have your monkeys freak out during an experiment, but look at those faces. You can't be mad. The research indicates that vervets have control over when to use their different calls, and there's a possibility that there's some cognition involved in their usage, but future research is needed. The bottom line for us today is that these calls are not like words. Now, there are many vocalizations that vervets use to communicate. Contact calls are produced when vervets see a monkey who is not a member of their group. Aggression calls are made by aggressors in conflict. This juvenile is making what is known as a lost call. This was after he was separated from his mom and older brother. And vervets even have alarm calls for baboons and humans. Vervets also have a great many physical cues that they use to communicate. Self-scratching, self-grooming, and yawning can be signs of stress. For an example of stress, let's look at this subadult male when a high-ranking and historically antagonistic male enters his tree. Signs of aggression are unambiguous, like staring, opening their mouths, head bobbing, and full body stare attacks like we can see in this video. Eye contact is intimidating, so if you're ever around monkeys, try to avoid a staring contest because they are sore losers and they will threaten you with violence. Great signals of submission are dropping your body down into a crouched position and a full toothed grin. Mouth to mouth is an affiliative gesture. This is when a monkey touches its mouth to or near its partners, like giving a kiss. Lip smacking is not in fact bad monkey table manners. You can often hear it and see it when it happens. It looks and sounds a bit like this. It occurs during grooming and sexual encounters, and often a monkey will lip smack to a more dominant monkey as a sign of submission. I've also seen monkeys lip smack to caregivers when they're passing out food. We've only really just gotten a taste of what vervet communication is like, but now you should have a good handle on the basics. If you'd like to learn more about monkey sociality and communication, I would recommend reading a fantastic piece of foundational literature, How Monkeys See the World, Inside the Mind of Another Species. It was written by Dr. Dorothy Cheney and Dr. Robert Safarth, two of the foundational investigators in vervet monkey research. I hope that now you have a better understanding for vervet monkey communication beyond just three alarm calls, because there's much more to understand and explore. I would like to send a special thank you to Dr. Erica Van de Waal for lending her time and experience. You can learn more about Dr. Van de Waal's research and her field station, the Inkawa Vervet Project, in the link in the description. You can also follow the Inkawa Vervet Project on Twitter, at Inkawu P to get research updates and to learn when volunteer opportunities are available. And you can keep up with them on Instagram to learn about the lives of the monkeys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.